Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Finger. I'm director of the New York Eye Cancer Center and a professor of ophthalmology. My specialty is the diagnosis and treatment of ocular tumors, orbital diseases, and ophthalmic radiation therapy. Part 4 of this series will build on what we learned from the prior videos. I recommend that you view them prior to viewing this lecture. Here we will examine several unusual retinal vascular tumors, focusing on their unique characteristics on photography and angiography. Photography is a foundational element of my eye cancer practice. Whether the tumor is on the eyelid, conjunctiva, iris, ciliary body, retina, choroid or optic nerve, there is nothing more telling than comparative imaging. Sometimes it's comparing an older image versus a current image for change. Other times it's correlating the image to OCT, fundus autofluorescent imaging, or an angiographic pattern with color images. That's why at the New York Eye Cancer Center we have 55-inch high-resolution screens in every exam room. That helps us examine and show patients their tumor. For example, there is nothing like seeing why a tumor has affected your vision or its regression of your retinal vascular tumor after treatment. Section 4 is an overview of retinal tumors, photography, and fluorescein angiography. Because they're retinal, we don't use endocyanin green angiography. Retinal tumors are typically seen anterior to the retinal pigment epithelium. Thus, their surface and intrinsic vascular patterns are easily viewed. You can see why retinal cavernous hemangiomas have been described as a cluster of grapes. These grapes are actually large, low-flow, saccular aneurysms. Retinal cavernous hemangioma aneurysms are isolated from the normal retinal circulation. Their perfusion is typically delayed, incomplete, or layered. However, the aneurysms do not leak. This photograph reveals a juxtafoveal retinal cavernous hemangioma. Note the multiple grape-like aneurysms best seen in the middle of the tumor. The aneurysms are larger towards the bottom, and atypical hemorrhage can be seen just temporal to the tumor. The mid-phase angiogram shows that many of the aneurysms have not filled. This is particularly true for the larger aneurysms toward the bottom of the tumor. The beginnings of levels of hyperfluorescence can be seen. Here we see the late-phase fluorescein angiogram that shows most all of the aneurysms have filled. This leaves only a few with levels of hyperfluorescence. Also note that the margins of the aneurysms are very well defined. This indicates no significant leakage into the vitreous. Here we see a retinal cavernous hemangioma with its grape-like aneurysms extending into the fovea. Note the overlying fibrotic components as well as isolated aneurysmal extensions along its periphery. Here in the mid-phase fluorescein angiogram, once again we see poor early tumor perfusion of the larger aneurysms. However, the smaller peripheral aneurysms are hyperfluorescent. A later phase fluorescein angiogram reveals gravity-dependent erythrocyte sedimentation or layering within the aneurysms. Note that the top layer is hyperfluorescent. Here, a very late-stage fluorescein angiogram reveals increased and persistent superior hyperfluorescence within the large aneurysms and some persistent hyperfluorescence in the smaller peripheral lesions. Another and more common retinal vascular tumor is the von Hippel angioma. The underlying pathophysiology is one of an arteriovenous malformation. There should be a dilated feeder artery and a dilated draining vein. Both of these vessels are best seen in the early phases of the fluorescein angiogram. 
This anomalous high-flow retinal vasculature comes together and forms a yellow retinal tumor. This process could lead to exudation, subretinal fluid, or retinal detachment with retinal traction. Patients with von Hippel angiomas may have the von Hippel-Lindau syndrome associated with multiple endocrine neoplasia, including pheochromocytomas, pancreatic cysts, renal cysts, and renal cell carcinoma, as well as cerebellar angiomatosis. These patients should be managed with a neurologist. Fluorescein angiogram characteristics of the retinal capillary hemangioma include high-flow rapid transit of dye through the tumor, afferent and efferent vessels that can be identified in the early phases, as well as profuse leakage into surrounding tissues and into the vitreous. In this early phase fluorescein angiogram, the artery is perfused and the vein is not. In the mid-phase angiogram, it already shows how difficult it could be to differentiate the feeding artery from the draining vein. In the late phase, as the tumor blood vessels leak, it appears like a light bulb of hyperfluorescence with leakage into the overlying vitreous. In this case, note the yellow retinal tumor with dilated afferent and efferent blood vessels. Though this is an early phase angiogram, that demonstrates the lacy intrinsic vascularity of the tumor, it is already too late to reveal which is the artery and which is the vein. In this case, the von Hippel angioma is occurring right next to the optic disc. In these cases, it's nearly impossible to determine the feeder artery or draining vein. However, in consideration of their position in the posterior pole, they are relatively easy to photograph. In the mid-phase fluorescein angiogram, all we see is early diffuse hyperfluorescence. In the late-phase fluorescein angiogram, we see persistent hyperfluorescence of the tumor and gravitationally asymmetric leakage into the vitreous. So what have we learned today? Cavernous hemangioma of the retina is characterized by saccular aneurysms that fill slowly compared to the normal circulation and demonstrate erythrocyte sedimentation. Von Hippel angiomas will show their feeding artery, intrinsic vascularity, and draining vein, but only if you capture images of them during the early phases of the fluorescein angiogram. When von Hippel angiomas are juxtapapillary, it's nearly impossible to image their arterial supply. Thank you for completing all four sections of Photography and Angiography by Dr. Finger. The last section is a, a quiz, which will help remind you of the most important points. The entire work is supported by the Eye Cancer Foundation. Since 1998, the Foundation has been supporting research and education in ophthalmic oncology. The Foundation's work can only be accomplished with your support. Please consider helping us foster multi-center international cooperation. Your support will provide new eye cancer specialists for unserved countries, increase their ability to perform and therefore save both sight and life throughout the world. Thank you for your attention. I invite you to take the following test in Section 5 and or visit our website of the Eye Cancer Foundation, eyecancercure.com.